So when you're looking to upgrade your home studio, where do you go after your Scarlet or maybe your Evo or maybe you're still holding on to that Behringer waiting for the big jump up? But where do you jump to? Well, let's see if Antelope Audio can answer that question. And also, let's put at least one complaint about the company to the test. Now, before anything else, I should point out Antelope Audio did send me this bundle. I'm not keeping it, even though they offered, though now I kind of want to. It's built like a tank, all aluminum chassis, smaller than I thought it was going to be. It's a very sleek design, all in all. The buttons are super satisfying, and if you like clicky, whew, you're going to love this. The XLR ports and quarter inch ports are good and it even has RCA outs on the back along with the quarter inch. I should also mention on the back there are two power ports, one for bus power and the other for wall power if you aren't using it with a computer. Also, two headphone jacks on the front and of course that big beautiful screen which gives you some of the best information that you could want on a small unit like this. Absolutely love that touch. Okay then, time for the specs. This thing is 4 in and 8 out, 192 kilohertz, 24 bit, 65 dB of gain. It's got a dynamic range of 121 dB A weighted, total harmonic distortion of neg 106 dB, and an EIN of neg 128 dB U A weighted. It's USB 2.0 connectivity. It has RCA coax spitf in and out, 64 bit AFC or acoustically focused clocking, something that Antelope is particularly known for. And of course it's bus powered, which generally means the first thing getting turfed is the headphone outs. Though, despite not having any specs online, I can say the headphone amp has been fantastic. No issues whatsoever on bus power. And of course the big selling feature, AFX to DAW, which we'll circle around to in a few seconds. Now, all those specs aside, I can tell you Julian Krauss did a very in-depth review of the interface and tested these numbers. I'll link to his video in the description if you want to check that out, and I'll be pointing to that video a few times throughout this one. Well worth a watch after you finish here, of course. Just saying. Now then, what in God's name is AFX to DAW? Part of the problem with having inline software effects when recording is latency. Not everyone is rocking a brute strength massive PC that they can afford the extra RAM and CPU bandwidth. So if you try, it can cause massive spikes in latency. This thing comes with an onboard computer which has one job and one job only, and that is to process the effects in real time with almost zero latency, which might be a big deal for you and frankly is a very cool option if you prefer software instead of hardware for your effects. And then we get to exactly where Antelope Audio completely destroys the competition for best interface bundle. This is the Edge Solo. It's a modeling mic. Now, if you're unaware of what a modeling mic is, it's basically a microphone that sets to emulate other industry standard microphones. Now, they're never cheap, but when included with this bundle, this one actually is. Now, to run over the stats, it's a cardioid condenser microphone. 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. The sensitivity is listed as neg 35 dB, which I'm going to guess is dBV per Pascal, though I'm not going to stake my career on that. The signal to noise ratio is 75 dB A weighted, and the self noise is 19 dB A weighted. Now, those last two numbers might make you pause, and that's fair, though this thing isn't meant for crystal clear recordings. Rather, it's made for dynamic usage, especially for music producers that are looking for that versatility in their mic cabinet and might want a jack of all trades. And those modeled mic sounds are recorded in line with extremely low latency. They have all the classic Neumann mics in here. Also, you've got the SM7B, R820, the C414, which if you've seen the video, I love it a lot. And there's just a ton more like this, lots of toys to play with. All in all, what I would call this microphone is fun. Time for the off-axis rejection of the Edge Solo microphone. This is me speaking about five inches off the front of the capsule. Now I'm speaking about five inches off the side of the capsule. Now I'm speaking about five inches off the rear of the capsule. Now for the plosive rejection of the Edge Mic Solo. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper. 
peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Now for the proximity effect test of the Edge Mic Solo. This is me speaking about five inches from the front of the microphone. Now I'm about one inch off the front of the microphone. Five inches, one inch. Five inches, one inch. This is the Antelope Audio with the SM7B profile loaded in. And this is the SM7B, the actual SM7B. I'm wondering what they sound like. I haven't heard these yet. I don't have headphones on. All I can see are the sound waves. I, can, I can't see how well these two mics are going head to head. So let me know, what do you think? Next up, we have the RE20. But first, I want to know, what did you think? The SM7B versus the Antelope Audio fake SM7B. Now we have the RE20 versus the Antelope Audio's version of the RE20. And this is how they sound. I'm looking, they're game matched on screen. Can you tell which one's which? Like when you go back and forth between them, this isn't a blind taste test. I just want to know, is there much of a difference? Well, which one do you think? This one is the Antelope Audio RE20 fake. And this one? is the real RE20. What do you think? This is kind of cool. I'm actually kind of getting a kick out of doing modeling mics. Kind of like this. I'm going to keep doing this stuff with more modeling mics. Let me know what you think down below. Now, before we get to some of the conclusions, I should point this out. Now, when I'm doing a review process, one of the things I like to do is check out the service and support. And boy, did I have the opportunity to do that here. So I first tried installing the interface on my laptop. A one month old laptop, state of the art, top, top of line, and it didn't work. So I tried my desktop and it all worked out. So I called support and then I got no answer. I tried the live chat online, no answer. That's when I started to consider actually sending this back. But then finally on the third phone call in three hours, I finally got through. It only took us 45 minutes. You had to actually take my computer over via TeamViewer. Once I got them on the phone, great service. But come on. And I know Antelope Audio is watching this. You need to fix that. Companies that sell hardware at a fraction of the cost are answering their phones. You have to as well. I'm not going to hold this against the bundle for this video. But without answering that phone and without actually putting your foot forward in the service and repair industry, you're literally selling us a very expensive paperweight. And that's not acceptable. Keep this in mind if you're looking at this product. And I guess with that in mind, let's start with the cons. Yeah, okay. Including that, there's a couple. But while saying that, everything seems to be balanced out by something else. For instance, some of the specs are what you call underwhelming, or at least they're underwhelming from what you might expect from Antelope Audio. Once again, see Julian Krauss. But then some of the specs have no business being on this cheap of an interface. That seems to be the trade-off. The whole setup of the system <laughs> was a tad annoying, even without the phone call. But once again, it's due to the proprietary software involved with setting one of these up. Once again, though, Perhaps annoying, but if you follow the directions and watch a video or two, you'll be fine. And I guess that leads us to the pros. This is basically a set up and go unit once you've got it set up. It's an instant music studio, instantly recording music between the mic modeling and the plugins that come along with it. You're set up. It's a chance to take that extra step and start learning the more complex forms of production without going broke. I mean, even a streamer that's looking to take his sound to another level. You can use the included EQ and compression, running in line as part of your setup without any chance of that nuisance lag. And for the price of what it is, this thing actually had me doubting my AudioFuse Studio. That's impressive. Just in time for my furnace to kick in, let's take a look at the final thoughts. And for that, we need to look at exactly what this thing is. You see, there's three tiers of audio equipment. You have consumer, you have prosumer, and you have pro. All three pretty straightforward for what they are. But if for a lot of gear, especially in that prosumer tier, they're on a sliding scale. Meaning it might be a bit closer to that pro tier than the consumer tier. And that's kind of what we have here. Almost like a fourth tier, kind of like an entry level pro. That's exactly what this is. This equipment will show you the ropes. Start that learning curve just a little bit earlier. 
It gives you the hardware and the software needed to start creating right now. The microphone's a massive bonus as well if you're considering this bundle, and why not? The mic is made for the interface. That's why I framed this video the way I did in the beginning. If you're looking for that next step up in gear, and you're ready for a bit of a challenge in your content creation, well, this is hard to ignore. It's a big thumbs up, as long as that customer experience with troubleshooting improves. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, try that like button out. It's fun to push. And maybe try this video next. Cheers, and I'll see you in the next video.